Central Sports presents BattleBots. It's a heavyweight throwdown with Duol taking on Slam. Then it's clang, clang, clang as Biohazard bumps up against Mjolnir. And we close the night with an all-out aluminum orgy, the lightweight rumble. Like a defiant chin, Fort Mason, the epicenter of modern robotic fighting. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comedy Central's BattleBots. I'm Sean Salisbury here in San Francisco alongside my partner, Bill Dwyer. Sean, I never feel more alive than before a long, hard night of BattleBotting. Well, folks, our crack team's going to bring you nothing but the best in metallic mayhem tonight. We've got two slamming fights in the first ever All Out Lightweight Rumble. Yeah, and in case your head's been stuck up your diamond plated exhaust pipe for the past month, let me get you up to speed. Two fighting robots keel haul each other for three minutes or until one of them is no longer functioning. If it goes the distance, the judges award points for aggression, strategy, and damage inflicted. Well, is it any wonder it's the new national pastime? Now, first up is a super heavyweight contest between Do All and Slam. Bill, what do you know about these two bots? I know a lot. Do All is a nasty, treaded tank from Novato, California, with a pneumatic spike specially designed by owner Scott LaValle. And Slam is a spastic spinner from the father-son team of Lowell and Steve Nelson. This product of Quincy, California comes equipped with rotating death blade. All right, partner, thanks a lot. And even though it's not advisable, we decided to get up close and mechanical with a BattleBot Slam. Lowell and Steve Nelson are connoisseurs of carnage, trying to cook up a winning BattleBots recipe in their garage. And their robot Slam ain't no hippie vegetarian. I guess he's a metal carnivore. He loves to eat metal from other robots. If it gets out of control, well, so be it. Slam is like Pavlov's dog, only instead of a bell, he responds to fresh meat. I believe in PETA, you know, the people for the eating of tasting animals. The Nelson's pride and joy has a big case of the metal munchies and no plans for moderation. Slam, he's is not on a diet. We don't care how many calories he gets when we go to a fight. Old Slam, man, he just he, he just loves metal. So, Steve, is there anything Slam can't chew up and spit out? Um, yes, but it, it's made out of a special material that doesn't exist on this planet. It's called unobtainium. All you non-athletic dads looking for something to do with your sons, why not build killer robots together? <laughs> Let's go down to the suavest ring announcer of the business, Mark Vero. heavyweight elimination contest. Introducing in the red square to my left, 312 pounds of pulverizing determination, destruction, and doom. You'll need more than a saw to kill Duol. Not just that pneumatic ramrod that you see, but also a wedge and on the in back. The blue square, it's the round mound of pound. It's 304 pounds of brute force. Let's hear it for Slam! Slam's offensive force comes in a way of spinning. Duol's builder Scott LaValle completely rebuilt a Ford Model A while he was still in high school. Cole Nelson says they built a super heavyweight robot because making things small is hard. That time the box is locked, the lights are on, it's robot fighting time, you'll see them. Slam to your left, do all to your right. Slam's got to get those RPMs moving to get that offensive spinning weapon to his advantage. Slam stands for Stephen Lowell's attack machine. And you can see it's getting ready to attack. Being careful with those hell razors that come up those ramps. Don't want to get off balance and flipped over and cause yourself an unforced error as they close in now. Do all with that little ramp trying to get in tight to stop the spinning blades. That's what he's got to do. He's got to sacrifice the wedge and then turn around and come at him with that pneumatic ramrod. Well, that was a big blow, really, on the offensive coast. Up and it looks like he's going to take another run at him right now. Not a lot of arms. Nice. That's slam moving. Just missed the kill saws. And oh, oh, he did miss the kill saws. Drives right into the kill saws. And no, the spinner is out. That's why 
why it's so important to be a good driver, not just in the battle box, but in life. Something that malfunction slams, biggest advantage was having that spinner, and it spins no more. There's obviously some damage done to that robot. You think? Yeah. I would say that the spinning device has been taken out, perhaps replaced with a slow spinning device. It seems like both drivers are having problems with their controls. Duo's got to take advantage right now, and he's starting to. Starting to push Slam around a little bit, but this is the time. If Slam's not spinning, you got to attack. You have to attack and go in there, but it looks to me that his accuracy, the driver, of Duo having a hard time finding exactly where he's supposed to be. Maybe he's having trouble with his controls, like you said. Also, we're having two robots here, not a lot of offense, struggling to find their range here and do some offensive domination. And again, a little pop right there, a little pop and a push, a little yeah, pop and a push. Oh. First one's free. Both teams would have a hard time passing the driving test right now, Sean. Don't ask them to parallel park, I was just going to say. <laughs> Remember, this is three minutes until your robot becomes inoperable and slam. Slowly moving, so they're not going to call it yet. But look now as Duol looks like he's trying to go in for the kill, put slam away for good, but slam. no. Slam. There's got to be something wrong with the controls on Duol. Slam should stand for slow, lazy, and mercurial. Slam is all about it. Throws himself into the spike strip. Yeah, Show that he's still a little loose. Open points right there. We're under 30 and seconds takes himself right into the other wall. There must be something wrong with the steering mechanism too there because no man driving that is going to drive it into the wall and risk taking himself out of commission. It's like rearranging the furniture right here on the job. They're definitely a contract in design but not of style, these box are. The team's still moving and Slam is getting... Oh, Slam's back off the wall. Not a lot of on. They're calling the fight, that's it. And they should. Super heavyweights didn't do a whole lot of offensive fighting. Oh, look at the crowd. Disapproves of Our that normally fight. normally genteel crowd, very upset. Take a look at this, the spinning. This, this is where, this is right here. This, this is what put him out, Sean. Right over the kill saws, takes out the spinning, and that's it, that takes out Slam. And you can see, he's a tough machine when he's working. But Duol coming right at him with the wedge, sacrificing the wedge, like I said. I'll tell you what, a pretty easy fight for Duol. Didn't have to do a lot. Let's go down to Ladies the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, decision. Mm, the time, two minutes, 51 seconds. The winner in the red corner by knockout, Duol! Seems a just shame. As we, yeah, just as we thought. There wasn't a whole lot of offense on Slam. Let's get to the battle stats and find out exactly what happened. All right, Duol did just enough to win. Sent Slam to the robot slum until next season. It was 3-1 to one in June. Jab, zero to zero in slams, and even had less hazard damage, two to one. So Duol moves on in the tourney and Slam goes back to the garage. Let's get down to the battle box floor. Not much action out there. No, what what happened? Disappointing, very disappointing. At first I had control and uh, 30 seconds in the match, all of a sudden I had no control over the, uh, the treads and which direction it was going. Here, yeah, you won. I won, but I don't feel like I really won. Inside I didn't win. All right, and good luck on your next match. Thanks. Coming up, we got a big time fender bender with Mjolnir and Biohazard, plus the calamitous chaos of the lightweight rumble. For more information on BattleBots and how you can enter a fighting robot in a BattleBots competition, log on to BattleBots.com. Welcome back to San Francisco. Where else would you expect to find legalized robot fighting? Yeah, well, welcome back to the big robot brawl-a-thon also. Our fight card continues with the super heavyweight clash between Mjolnir and Biohazard. Yeah, like me and you fighting over the last of the eyeshadow, this one promises to be noisy, nasty, and non-stop. Yeah, well, Bill, before the fight begins, you got to give us these vital statistics. All right, me pleasurito, Sean. As any school child not from America knows, Mjolnir means the hammer of Thor. And that's just what owner Don LaRiviere's Redondo Beach Baby brings to the party in the form of a big steel mallet. Then there's a highly clinical biohazard. This low riding wedge packs an actuated lifting arm. Carlo Bertaccini brought him here from Belmont, California. For more on biohazard, let's go down to our Bill Nye. The heavyweight contender Biohazard has a six-wheel drive, anti-wedge fenders, and a steel lifting arm over a meter long. Its heavy batteries are low slung, so it can put the big flip on a careless opponent. Billy, as always, thanks and great job. Let's throw it down to the silver-haired man in the black tie, contest. Mark Bureau. Introducing in the red square, weighing in 
at 180 pounds of merciless metal and sadistic steel. If you think fighting him is tough, try saying his name. Introducing Majolnir. And its opponent in the blue square, from the gates of hell to the streets of San Francisco, weighing in at 210 pounds, and is currently the number one ranked heavyweight battle bot, here is Biohazard! Don't be misled by that sleek design. Don LaRivier used to be a Formula One race car mechanic. That will give him a huge advantage in the pits. Biohazard cost over $12,000 to build, but Carlo has been successfully getting sponsorship to offset that cost. Box is locked, lights are on, it's robot fighting time. Here's those Hellraisers. The owner All taking the, the wrong place. route. Biohazard way more maneuverable, buddy. He can move, but he can't spin like that, can he? A third weapon for me older. And the one thing about this is you talked to me before as we studied this, uh, both of these opponents, and you said with the wheels and the kill saws could come into play in this battle. They're like regular tires, buddy. I'm a GTO, the judge. Now they can be popped. And on that pedal, you see Biohazard. Uh, very sleek design. He's about indestructible. Yes, he is, and those kill saws can do no damage to the metal unless there was something showing underneath, which I don't think there is. And Mjolnir's doing a lot of slamming, but he hasn't hit Biohazard once. But if that pickaxe comes down, that could be major damage. Now, Biohazard coming into the battle box was the top-ranked heavyweight, and for good reason. As you can see the driver maneuvering very, very well around the arena, around the battle box floor. Does Thor's hammer come with an instruction manual? Because he needs well, he's having a little trouble being accurate with that hammer and with the way he drives. There's the arm. There's the beautiful arm. Biohazard really being very, very methodical about this bout, going about it, not using much of the offensive lifting arm, but those flat tires on the older causing himself a lot of trouble and really not inflicting a whole lot of punishment with that design. It seems like the arm's a little bit too long. There we see now, the older going over the top. Biohazard using a little bit of that lifting arm. Now, is that a flat tire He's already? He's got a flat tire, Sean. The right tire is flat also. Both these tires flat as the owner just trying. And look at the, the oh, tire falling off. Oh, now it's sad. Three minutes or till into past Oh, now he's stuck in the Hellraisers and getting caught by the kill saws. And we're inside a minute of this bout. I don't know if it'll get there. Flat tires coming off. The rims are bent. And the Hellraisers got him pinned. And take a look at ruthless biohazard just trying to put him away. Time. Yeah, just taking his time to work himself in there and lift him up. Biohazard running around the ring really hasn't had to do much except allow Mjolnir to drive himself into those ramps. Look at that, but no, the show saw not doing a lot. Not the prettiest fight, but the senseless destruction. Lovely. How do you control it? Have you ever driven a car with a flat tire? Yeah. No control at all. I drove one over here. <laughs> now, See, this is the problem with a, uh, with a battle bot like Mjolnir. It's all timing, dropping that arm, and he's lost a lot of it with both tires being flat. That arm not, not overly quick, so the timing by Biohazard to get in and out. Stick and move, and there you go. There you have it. An appreciative crowd. Biohazard does a nice job, plays good defense, but self-inflicted pain by Mjolnir. There you see the flat tires already. Now see, the tires are already flat in the replay here. You can see the rubber coming off it. That's from the kill saws. And now Biohazard showing exactly what he's made out of. Picture perfect. Driving the wedge underneath him, taking the arm and lifting him up. It did really hit. Oh, what's And there's that? a shot from our kill saw cam. There you have it. Yeah. Biohazard not That's having to use a whole lot of force. Box. Yes, it is. Look at that smoke. Three minutes of fighting. Yoler on the defensive Ladies will also be on the small side of this decision. The three judges at arena side have turned in a 9-0 to zero decision for the blue square, Biohazard. There you go. Congratulations to Biohazard.
the battle stacks. All right, Sean, here's how it looks. Biohazard just had his way down in the trenches. Slow moving power struggle, bested Mjolnir and slams four to nothing, as well as scoring more jabs 11 to four. Hazard damage did Mjolnir in, but it was two to one in favor of him. Yeah, well, down on the floor, Donna and Randy have the fighters' reactions. First, Donna with Biohazard. When did you first realize you were going to win? Was it when he got a flat tire? Not until the very end. He got a flat in the very end, and then he got cornered in a, in a position he couldn't get out of. Well, congratulations, and uh, good luck kick ass on the next one. I'll try. All Thanks. right. Mjolnir and uh, a valiant effort. You took two flat tires and you still kept whacking. Yep, just keep whacking till the batteries die. That's my theory, just keep whacking. You saw a great one there, but don't go anywhere, because when BattleBots returns, the joint will be swarming with a whole mess of angry, spinning lightweights. Welcome back to Comedy Central's BattleBots. Yeah, we've had two huge robot fights already, and tonight's third bout is something extraordinary. Oh, it's a dandy. The high lords of the sport have decided to throw an old-fashioned BattleBot rumble, where all the lightweights pile into the battle box for a nasty robot riot. Some of them still hope to win it all this season, while others are done and have a big axe to grind. With that in mind, we go down to the battle box for the reception line of the lightweight rumble. Here are the 10 principles beginning behind me. Ladies and gentlemen, Shrike! Shrike, he's got the spike, you bring that down. No tolerance! No tolerance, another spike. Thorn! What do you see there, Sean? A thorn. Ten to Moshi! Coverage and the, and, the, uh, and his own buzzsaw. And driven by a 14-year-old. The aggressive polygon! He's gonna surprise you with what he's got. Shaft! Shaft, with the shaft. Missing leg. The disposable hero. Yeah, the raising arm. Does that remind you of jewelry case? And back leg. big cheer, one of the favorites. The big pizza cutter. We got ourselves a major league rumble. Ten battle bots gonna get it on. Let's see who the last one surviving is. There may be more than one. It's like an MIT fishing trip. Blue drivers are ready. Remember, none of the hazards will be deployed in this bout. This is just an all-out free-for-all. We're gonna have some fun with it. But oh, look at the quickness now, what of do you, Thorn. Now, what do you think? Is the strategy just to attack everybody or team up with somebody and take on all others? I say what happened, you team up with somebody, then when you get down to you last two, you get it on. Now, what are those little green wheels I see deployed in the, in the ring here, Bill? That is part of Aggressive Polygon. He's a multi-bot. Those split off from the main body, and they've got little drill bits in, and they actually attack other robots. Looks like Thorn's going taken after uh, Backlash, who's been the favorite in his division throughout the Thorn going after him. Backlash looking for some people. You Backlash. see Tanamushi in the back standing in the middle of the ring looking to hit somebody. I like that and does so. Gives Thorn a little pop. We've already got some people that are in our Disposable you know, arrow. It looks like it's already been disposed of. There you see it's been Backlash and Thorn to date. No tolerance yeah. bringing down the arm. Yeah, for sale sign on him too. wonder what that means. There's Backlash moving fast and furious. Jab taking him on. I like that fight. I'm trying to find some DOS spot. I'm looking for shot. DOS spot. There's DOS spot on right there. Flash. They all want to take on the number one ranked battle box. Remember, you can run, but you cannot hide in this one. Look at all those controls. Now that frequency, take a look at that one. Oh. Dog spot getting hammered. In a got a Davida drum solo, but not as tedious. Eklis and DOS spot not backing down at all. Oh, big blow there. No tolerance. FIU. <laughs> FIU? That's Thorn, FI me. <laughs> oh, nice hit by Backlash. That jewelry box looking uh, DOS spot continues to come back after Backlash. We've had a lot of them eliminated. I don't see no tolerance. I can't find Panamushi anywhere. Disposable hero, Shaft, where are they? Some of these owners just want to send out the message that these bots aren't done with. They'll be back next year. One minute left. Inside a minute here, Backlash doing most of the dominating in this fight, punishing people as a lot of these robots have, I guess, bowed out early and often as Daspot 
Yeah, we got some caught along the spike strip, and where's the crowd favorite, Tanamushi? Take a look at Dospot is beat up with all those scratches. You see a lot of them. There's Shrike right there, the yellow one. He's incapacitated, it looks like. He's not doing anything. Shrike has a factor at all. Shaft running around looking for somebody to hit. Now there's Backlash that wheel. wheel not spinning anymore. Time to hit him now, fellas. Tanamushi with his back turned. Dospot compete until the end. We saw Shaft early on, and we haven't been able to find Shaft in a while I here. I just saw Shaft drive over there's with Shaft. the aggressive there you polyglots. Go. The aggressive polygons. This is becoming, we're inside of five seconds of four horse race and Backlash has been the aggressor. It's all over. Disposable hero. Living up to Truly his name, right? Disposable. <laughs> crowd appreciative of that all out. Crowd likes to rumble. Anytime uh, you see a whole box full of bots swinging at one another, everybody's a winner, Sean. Yeah, well don't power down. BattleBots will be back with info on the start of next week's quarterfinal action. We're back with this awesome site. Yes, it's a city by the bay, San Francisco, California. But it was another smashing night of robot fights where do all did the nasty and made Slam say uncle. The big dude will be back to fight another day. And Biohazard gave a toxic shock to Mjolnir. Biohazard advances to round two. And finally, the lightweight rumble. It rocked the house, and I think we both agree, even though it's an unofficial bout. Backlash. Backlash is the winner. Well, next week, quarterfinal action begins as the quest for the giant nut continues. It's lightweights Alpha Raptor and Tenamushi. Heavyweights Voltark and Biohazard. And super heavyweights Ramstein and Mechadon. Well, for Donna D'Erico, Jason and Randy Sklar, I'm Sean Salisbury. Time to sign off. And I'm Bill Dwyer, the Irish Tornado, leaving you with the hit of the week. Do not construct or operate a robot or battle bot without proper supervision.